Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 17, Mother Parvati Curses Chitraketu, and we're reading texts 24 through 27. So 27 is on the board, so I will read the texts and purports prior to this by myself. Ata prasadaye na tvam sapa mokshaya bhamani yanmanyase yasad hutang mamatat sam yatam sati. Translation. O mother, you are now unnecessarily angry. But since all my happiness and distress are destined by my past activities, I do not plead to be excused or relieved from your curse. Although what I have said is not wrong, please let whatever you think is wrong be pardoned. Purport. Being fully aware of how the results of one's karma accrue by the laws of nature, Chitraketu did not want to be released from Varvati's curse. Nonetheless, he wanted to satisfy her because although his verdict was natural, she was displeased with him. As a matter of course, Maharaj Chitraketu begged pardon from Parvati. Text 25. Shri Sukhubhacha Iti Prasadya Giraso Om Chitraketur Arindama Chigama Swabhimanena Pasyato Smayatostayo Translation Shri Sukhadeva Goswami continued O King Parikshit, subduer of the enemy after Chitraketu satisfied Lord Shiva and his wife, Parvati, he boarded his airplane and left as they looked on. When Lord Shiva and Parvati saw that Chitraketu, although informed of the curse, was unafraid, they smiled, being fully astonished by his behavior. Text 26. Tatas tu Bhagavan Rudro, Rudranim Edam Abravit, Deva Rishi Daitisid, let's see, Devarshi Daitisid Hanam, Parsadanam Tisrinvatam. Thereafter, in the presence of the great sage Narad, the demons, the inhabitants of Siddhaloka, and his personal associates, um, Lord Shiva, who is most powerful, spoke to his wife, Parvati, while they all listened. Okay, text number 27. Sri Rudru Vacha, Jistavati, Asi, Shushoni, Jista Vyatyasi Sushoni Harer Adbuta Karmana Harer Adbuta Karmana Mahat Vyang Vritya Vrityanang Nisprihanang Oh, excuse me. Mahatmyam Vritya Vrityanam Nisprihanam Mahatmanam 
Nisprihanam Mahatmanam Sri Rudruvacha Tristavatya Sisushano Naroni Adair Adbuta Karmana Mahat Yang Britya Brityanam Nisprihanam Mahatmanam Sri Rudruvacha Tristavat Yasi Sushoni Adair Adbuta Karmana Mahat Myam Britya Brityanam Nisprihanam Mahatmanam Sri Rudu Vacha Sri Trastya Tasi Sushoni Sri Rudruvacha, Lord Shiva said, Jastavati Asi, have you seen? Shushoni, oh beautiful Parvati, Hare, of the Supreme Prasant of Godhead, Adbhuta Karmana, whose acts are wonderful. wonderful. Mahatmyam, the greatness. greatness. Vitya Vrityanam, of the servants of the servants. servants. Nisprihanam, who are without ambitions for sense gratification. Mahatmanam, Great souls. souls. Translation. Lord Shiva said, My dear, beautiful Parvati, have you seen the greatness of the Vaishnavas? Being servants of the servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari, they are great souls and are not interested in any kind of material happiness. Responsibly, please. Lord Shiva said, my dear, beautiful Parvati, My dear beautiful Parvati, have you seen the greatness of the Vaishnavas? Being servants of the servants of the, servants of, the servants. of the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari, they are great souls and are not interested in any kind of material happiness. Purport, 
by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Lord Shiva, the husband of Parvati, told his wife, My dear Parvati, you are very beautiful in your bodily features. Certainly, you are glorious. But I do not think that you can compete with the beauty and glory of devotees who have become servants of the servants of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. End quote. Of course, Lord Shiva smiled when he joked with his wife in that way, for others cannot speak like that. Quote, the Supreme Lord, unquote, Shiva continued, quote, is always exalted in his activities, and here is another example of his wonderful influence upon King Chitraketu, his devotee. Just see, although you cursed the king, he was not at all afraid or sorry. Rather, he offered respect to you, called you mother, and accepted your curse, thinking himself faulty. He did not say anything in retaliation. This is the excellence of a devotee. By mild, mildly tolerating your curse, he has certainly excelled the glory of your beauty and your power to curse him. I can impartially judge that this devotee, Chittuketu, has defeated you and your excellence simply by becoming a pure devotee of the Lord." Unquote. As stated by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Turor apesihistu na. Just like a tree, a devotee can tolerate all kinds of curses and reversals in life. This is the excellence of a devotee. Indirectly, Lord Shiva forbade Parvati to commit the mistake of cursing a devotee like Chitraketu. He indicated that although she was powerful, the king, without showing any power, had excelled her power by his tolerance. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prista Bhutale Shri Mati Bhaktivedanta Swamini Tanamane Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharane Nirvase Sisunyavadi Pastitadi Satarane Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Mukam Karoti Vachalam, Pangam Langay Tegarim, Yakripa Tamaham Vande. Um. Sri Chaitanya Isvaram. See, I'm praying to. Um, be able to speak, and I can't even speak because <laughs> I forget. So this is um, this is our position in the material world. We're always dependent on the mercy of the Supreme Lord for everything we do. Okay, so we are in the middle of a pastime that all has a lot to do about speech. It's speech that got Chitraketu in big trouble. All right? And how he had reacted to get in trouble is also a very great lesson. I mean, Chitraketu was seriously humiliated from a material perspective. I mean, he was in the association of I don't know how many of these um, Vidyadharas, these beautiful ladies of the heavenly planets who know how to sing very nicely. He was one man with a lot of women. And he's being cursed by a woman. So m how much more humiliating, uh, a more humiliating situation can you get? 
But here, Chitiketu is totally unaffected. Now, how many in this room are married? I'm married. Any other? Yes, yeah, there's a lot of people that are married here. More than they admit. Okay? Or some of them are getting married soon. Okay, you don't know what you're in for. Okay? Um, those that are married, you know, probably know how difficult it is to take, like, instruction or criticism um, from your wife. It is extremely hard. Usually, I know myself, I rebel against it. And I've been doing it for almost 25 years. I never learn to accept that what is happening to me is due to my past activities. I simply, you know, you are my wife. You should never talk to your husband like that. You are out of line. And I, what happens when you get angry? You get covered over. And I don't get the lesson because it's quite a good possibility my wife has something um, pertinent to say that maybe I can work on something. And I just completely reject it because I'm the man and she's the woman. So here we see Chitra Ketu. Um, I mean, what an embarrassing situation from the material perspective. I mean, he has a lot of experience with women. I mean, he had 10 million wives. And now, um, believe it or not, he's renounced his wives, and he is still in the association of women. Um, Vididara is very beautiful women um, that sing very nicely. but. What is he doing with these women? He is chanting the glories of the Lord. So he's come to a point of not making distinction between man and woman. And these ladies are very nicely chanting the glories of the Lord. So he's um, in their association and making great spiritual advancement. And it is um, especially um, significant that he is exhibiting his great spiritual advancement by his tolerance. Um, now, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is one shloka. It's in the 17th chapter. And many, many, many years ago, I was in jail with Banabata. He's right here in Japan. And we had done the big offense of raising money to build temples here in India on tourist visas. We had committed a very big offense and the Japanese government were not going to tolerate it and they put us in jail and they later deported us. So I was learning slokas. Actually, I got put in jail twice. We used to act a little differently in those days than we do now. Um, I didn't, we didn't, well, I didn't learn my lesson of getting put in jail and getting deported because what happened when I got deported? Um, I immediately went and changed my name legally, got a new passport, and went right back into Japan and started collecting again on a tourist visa. And I got hit again. Bonabata didn't, but I did. And I went to jail all by myself this time, and it was for a little bit longer period of time. So during this period of time, for the first 18 days, I had only Japa beats, and I was very proudly chanting a lot of rounds. Okay. Then I got some books. And then I just said, well, you know, the advanced devotees, they know shlokas. So I'm going to learn shlokas. So I was going through the Bhagavad Gita, which shlokas should I learn? I was the devotee for like a, two years by then or something like that. And I started learning a lot of shlokas. 
And when I got to the 17th chapter, I couldn't find one sloka that I thought was pertinent, but now I know one. It's a very important sloka, Anuvega Karambakyam, and I still haven't learned it. I have to cheat. Satyam Priyahitam Sayat, Swadhyaya Vyasanam Chaiva, Vanmayam Tapauchate. Translation. Austerity of speech consists in speaking words that are truthful, pleasing, um, beneficial, and not agitating to others, and also in regularly reciting Vedic literature. So, you know, in this pastime, we're hearing how Chitrakesu didn't do anything wrong, and, and then we're hearing that he did do something wrong. There's like contradictions here. So I've kind of like been contemplating this. And Chitraketu was speaking to the Vidyadharas when he spoke what he said. And he said it with great awe and veneration for Lord Shiva. You know, look at this. Lord Shiva. Um, is sitting in front of all these sages and saintly people and he has he's wearing no clothes and he has his wife on his lap i mean what an exalted personality to um be uh, respected like this um when he's doing that because he is such a transcendental personality that's what his mood was but Parvati, Parvati, if you want to pronounce it properly, she was not seeing his, um, hearing the intonation of his voice. She could not see his, um, bot, his facial expressions. She couldn't pick up on his mood. All she could hear was his words. Um, this goes to show you how dangerous email is. Because someone could say something like um, Chitraketu to someone and mean one thing, and the person on the other end can pick it up in a completely different way. Because the, if you don't see the, the tone of, hear the tone of the voice, and you don't hear the expression, see the expression on the face, then you, you don't pick up on the mood of, of how it's being said. So she was greatly offended, okay? I mean, her husband is being insulted, where in actuality he was being glorified. So same thing being said, and, you, you know, the Vidyadharas, wow, Lord Shiva is such a, an exalted personality. And Parvati hears it, and he's condemning my husband. So, austerity of speech. You've got to be very careful how you speak in this world. Actually, the Upadesha Mrita um, is like the six Shastaka prayers of Lord Chaitanya. You start out in a very neophyte stage, and then you go to the highest stage, okay? And what's the very first word in the Upadesha Amrita? Vacho, speech. Vacho Vegam. Control your speech. So this is the ABCs of spiritual life according to the Upadesha Amrita. So, Chitraketu, he made an error here. Um, because although he had the proper mood, and he was saying something in glorification of Lord Shiva, he wasn't thinking, well, you know, Parvati's within earshot, and she can't, she won't be able to pick up on, you know, my mood 
And, you know, what I'm really saying about Lord Shiva, she's just going to hear the words. And so, therefore, what happened to him? He got cursed. I mean, what a curse. I mean, he got not only cursed to die, he got cursed to take birth as a demon. So taking birth as a, he wasn't afraid. Just like I have this um, computer here right now. Why do I have this computer? Because I'm afraid. I'm afraid I, you know, I, I, you know, when you give class in Mayapur, I mean, it's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of people watching, not only here, but also here. I mean, I usually watch the class and listen to the class on the internet, and it's usually about 160 people. More people, you're on television, and there's one thing you don't want to do is make, your, make a fool out of yourself in front of a lot of people. So it creates a lot of fear. So I study, I write down notes, and I'm like, wow, I got to prepare myself. I pray to the deities, I pray to Prabhupada, I, I get the blessings of the devotees. You know, please, you know, I'm afraid. I'm, um, I'm in front of a lot of people and I got to say something. But Chitra Ketu, here he is in a much, much more um, a difficult situation than I am in, giving a Srimad Bhagavatam in Sridhar Mayapur. He's in front of who knows how many Vidyadharas. There's all these saints and sages there listening to Lord Shiva. And I, I mean, when Lord Shiva speaks, there's going to be a lot of people coming to listen to him. Just like when Radha Swami speaks, I mean, it's just like packed. Now, Lord Shiva, when he speaks, it is packed. So Chitruketu, he is being chastised and criticized, ridiculed in front of a lot of people, and not only a lot of people, a lot of very exalted people. And he's getting cursed to die and take birth as a demon. And he's totally unafraid and unaffected and has a smile on his face. I mean, what an exalted personality. I mean, I can't even handle it when my wife in private, you know, criticizes me or chastises me. Um, and here he is in front of very special personalities and he's being ridiculed. So we can, like, there's different barometers we can think about of how we can judge ourselves in comparison to Chichiketu. I remember when I was a devotee for two weeks, Srila Prabhupada came to the farm in Hawaii, on the big island of Hawaii. And we had a very small temple room, and it was packed. I mean, Srila Prabhupada is there. And, you know, the Pajari offered the ghee lamp, and then offered the ghee lamp to the devotees, and then handed me the ghee lamp. What did I do? I went to everyone first and Srila Prabhupada last. I don't know why I did that. I had been there for two weeks. So I'd been, I was quite an experienced devotee by then. I had done, I had been to a lot of artiques and I had, you know, offered to the picture of Srila Prabhupada first. I'd been trained and went to all the devotees after that. Then the water. I got the water, went to all the devotees first, Srila Prabhupada last. Then the flowers, same thing. I mean, what an offense. But what did Srila Prabhupada do? Took the ghee lamp, um, accepted the water on his head, and smelled the flowers. What happens to me? I mean, come on. 
I've been around 40 years. You know, how long have you been around, Prabhu? <laughs> how long have you been a devotee? Huh? 15. 15 years. Okay. Sometimes the um, guy passing around the ghee lamp, I mean, I'm right in front you know, every morning because I like to. Anyway, I like to see Srila Prabhupada's picture when I chant the Sanchara prayers. And I'm in, the, in front of Panchatattva because I like to um, meditate on Prabhupada and then Lord Chaitanya and the whole Panchatattva when they say the Panchatattva prayers. And then I go over to the um, Radha Madhava temple because they are chanting Hare Krishna and then I like to meditate on um, Radha Madhava. Sometimes, you know, the Gila comes around. And wow, it goes to someone that's been around for 15 years first. And I go, hey, do you know who I am? <laughs> See this face? I've been around 40 years. He's been around for 15. You offer to me first, and then you offer to him. I, didn't, I don't say that, but it goes on in my mind sometimes. So I know... I'm not Shrituketu, I'm not on his level, because I can feel offended. Um, also, just like today, um, I greet the deities, Radha Madhav deities, and I stand in front of um, the Lord Nishingadev, because if you're a Prabhupada disciple, you don't have to wait in line to get the crown for um, Lord Nishingadev. So I'm waiting there, I'm greeting the deities and, um, and then Srila Prabhupada comes and he gets his the crown on his head and then he Prabhupada gets carried away and then the system here is okay the Prabhupada disciples they get there don't have to wait in line they get this get the crown on their head what happens some 15-year-old devotee steps right in front of me and gets the head, you know, the crown on and has been right before me. I feel like in my mind, get the hell out of here. Who do you think you are? Um, you know, I'm the um, senior person here. And then I say, oh, my God, I'm not Chitraketu. That is the barometer when things like this happen, you know. You know, like Srila Prabhupada passed the test in my eyes. He didn't give me an angry look. He didn't, and I did it three times. You know, it was like um, he was completely, he didn't say anything, didn't say anything to anyone else. Now, a lot of other people said things to me, <laughs> but he didn't. Okay, I'm getting some fear here now. I got to look at my notes. Okay, so that is one of the barometers when the ghee lamp comes around. I mean, in the, um, like Bhakti Chiru Maharaj once gave this course in Vrindavan about Vaishnava etiquette. And there's different, you know, it's according to when you get initiated. It's according to how old you are. It's according to... Um, you know, if uh, date of initiation. It's according to what order of life you're in. You know, if you're a sannyasi. And there's one more thing. There's five things. I forget one because I'm faulty personality. Okay. Now, you, what is it? Huh? Position. You're a temple president. Okay. You're a GBC. Now, you can be a GBC... You can be very old, you can be a guru, you can be, um, you know, all the things that are the requirements to get, you know, the respect first, according to Vaishnava etiquette. But you can be the most neophyte devotee. It doesn't mean that because you have, and oh, oh, and by the way, you may know a hundred slokas of Bhagavad Gita. You have a lot of knowledge. Okay? That's another one of the requirements, is the, the, having knowledge. But knowledge is of two kinds. 
There's jnana and there's vijnana. So what makes more? It's vijnana. Just like there's some devotees here in Mayapur, um, Bengali devotees, brahmacharis that live in this ashram right over there, they cannot read and they cannot write. But they're very advanced devotees. They're humble, they've heard, and they repeat what they've heard, and they're respectful people. They um, chant the holy name um, very sincerely. They're practicing, they have good sadhanas. So who's the more advanced devotee? Um, someone who can, you know, who likes to read all day long and learn all these slokas and gives a brilliant Bhagavatam class and but is very proud of his Bhagavatam classes, by the way. Or the simple brahmachari who's never asked to give a Brahm, uh, Bhagavatam class, who cannot read, who cannot write, but who is very humble, very meek, very respectful. He's decorated with good qualities. And he's chanting the holy name of the Lord with tears in his eyes. Now, there's that pastime with the Brahmana who was illiterate, and he was crying because, you know, he was ordered by his spiritual master to read Bhagavad Gita. He couldn't read. But he took Bhagavad Gita and would just look at the picture of Krishna driving the chariot of Arjuna, and he would be... Tears were falling from his eyes while he was, you know, attempting to, because his spiritual master ordered him to, and he couldn't do it, but he still tried. Because here is God, and he's serving his devotees. So this is what Krishna does. He cares about his devotees. And he serves his devotees. Tesam satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yene mamupuyantate. To those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. So this is the barometers. Okay, there's the, um, you know, standing in front of Lord Nishringadev and waiting in line to get the crown on your head. There's the passing around the ghee lamp. Also, not only sometimes, especially here in Mayapur, I'm sure we've all experienced this, sometimes when it's crowded and the pilgrims come, what happens? The ghee lamp comes around and there's like a tidal wave of people lunging for the ghee lamp. And what happens to you? You get jostled. And, it, and it's like you're in danger of your life. It's like a, a stampede. So what's going through your mind? You know, I know what goes through my mind. You know, don't these stupid people know that the ghee lamp is going back and forth and it's going to come to you anyway? Don't you have any patience? It's going to, you can get the ghee lamp and touch it. So that's one viewpoint. And with anger. And with hatred. And with envy. And there's another viewpoint. Wow. Look at these people here. They've come from so far. They've undergone such austerities to get to Mayapur. And many of them are like sleeping outside and, you know, going into the smelly public restrooms to take a bath in the morning. And they're coming to, the, and they're just grabbing for as much mercy as they can get. They're so greedy to get the mercy of um, Radha Madhava Panchatattva Lord Gishinga Davis. When they see that ghee lamp, they, they're, they're bound and determined. They're going to get that prashad. So, also, sometimes, you know, I used to be kind of, it would be very difficult for me when it was crowded. 
And I would think, oh, God, I can't handle this. But that's, you know, it's like can't even move. You can't get back to see Lord Nishingadev, you know, at the very back of the temple room because it's like too crowded. But then I think, wow, Srila Prabhupada must be very, very, very pleased. I mean, back in, when I was here in 77, there wasn't that many people. And it was easy to get around. But now, because of the preaching of the devotees, and the pujaris decorating the deities so nicely. I mean, Mayapur, and, we're, and this new temple is being built. Everyone from all over wants to come to Mayapur, and for so many reasons, and here they are in this temple room with you. <laughs> and I, so I started thinking, oh, how Srila Prabhupada is pleased. And then I also started, I also was introspective and said, you know, I'm making it crowded for them. I'm taking up space just as much as they are making it crowded for me. So who am I to be angry at other people because it's crowded? This is glorious. And the more, the merrier. The more people chanting the holy name, the more the purifying effect. So then I adjusted my consciousness and as, I, as the ghee lamp comes around and I get almost killed <laughs> or, um, you know, I'm struggling to get back to Lord Nishingadev in the back of the temple room in the Mongol Arctic. And I think, okay. I'll just think of Lord Nishingadev and I'll eventually get there. And there's, um, there's so many other ways we can be introspective and judge to see who we are in, in relationship to Miss Chichuketu. One way, another way, is to chant, associate with advanced devotees um, and serve them. And you, you just like Jayananda, I never got to see Jayananda. I mean, I was on an island. I was in Hawaii in those days. And I joined later. Like sometimes people say, oh, he's a very senior Prabhupada disciple. I say, sorry, I'm a very junior Prabhupada disciple. I joined much later. I'm a, I'm a bacha. I'm a kid compared to my god brothers. And Jayananda, you hear about Jayananda, and he was such a sincere devotee, and he was taking out the trash, and he had such an effect on the conditioned souls that there was this one official who didn't like the devotees but loved Jayananda. And every year they'd go to Tuzur to get the permission for the Ratiyatra, and she'd give them a hard time, but not Jayananda. Jayananda would give her a big cream pie and then one year the devotees went to get the permit and says where's this Johnny Ananda and they said well he passed away and she had tears in her eyes so this is the effect of advanced devotees you can, it's just, you can judge a great devotee um, by how many other devotees they make. What effect do you have on other people? And um, we don't want to have the effect on other people that Chitra Ketu had on Parvati. Um, because it does matter what other people think about you. You're representing um, Srila Prabhupada, you're representing Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, you're representing Gorkachur Das Bhavati, you're representing Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you're representing Lord Chaitanya, the six Goswamis. It matters. So we learn from the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam how to act, and here in this section of Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to be very, very careful of how we speak. Any questions or comments?
Yes, Mataji. Ni hao ma. She she. By the way, I only know those words. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, speak very clearly and very loudly. Well, in the Bhagavad Gita, oh, okay, I'll repeat the question. She's saying that sometimes, you know, a devotee um, will criticize another devotee and then feel bad about it and not be very tolerant of his mind because it's his mind that caused him to speak like this and it's not good so is it good to be tolerant of your mind or should we um, be tolerant of our mind should we or shouldn't we well Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said we shouldn't tolerate our mind we should beat it with a broomstick and and beat it with shoes one in the day and one in the night um, but at the same time in the Gita, a Sangsaya Mahabaho Munamanor de Negraham Chalam, a Byasina to Kuntea, Badagina Sagurite. It is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it is possible by constant practice and by detachment. Which means okay, we don't always get to control the mind, so we have to be detached and then get up here, get up and try again. And try yato yato nishtelati manishtantil mustaram tatasatoniyam yaitad atmani eva vishangnayat. From whatever and wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. So elsewhere in the Gita, I don't remember the Sanskrit, but it's, it's like one who is constantly endeavoring for, for perfection is assured of success. So, we should and we shouldn't. I mean, we should recognize our faults and we should endeavor to rectify them. But then when we fail in doing what we were supposed to do in a later date, we should just simply with, be tolerant and withdraw our, and, and bring the mind back and again try. What's that, you know, saying? If you f first fail, try, try again. So that is like the mind of the conditioned soul. You're showing Krishna that you failed so many times, but you keep trying. And that's showing great sincerity. You never give up in um, endeavoring to control the mind. And when do we know when the mind is our friend? Because it's described in the Gita in the sixth chapter that it is the worst enemy of the conditioned soul. Bandhurat matmanas tasya yenat maiva manajitaha anatmanas tu shatrutve varte tat maiva shatruvat. For one who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. But for one who has failed to do so, his very mind will be the greatest enemy. So you have to beat your mind, all right? We have to beat our mind with the Hare Krishna mantra. We have to beat our mind by um, humbly serving great souls. We have to beat our mind by tolerating it, it when our wife tells us what to do and criticizes us. us. Um, this is different ways of beating the mind. 
But what is the person, what is the symptom of a living entity who has the mind as the friend? That's the next sloka. Jitatmana prasantasya paramatma samahita sitoshna sukadukeshu tatamana pamanayo. This is proof that Kshitaketu is an advanced soul, by the way, even though he is hanging around with a lot of women his whole life. Ten million wives and then the Vidyadhas later. Um, for, um, for one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached. So you know when you've conquered your mind, when you perceive super soul. To such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. Now, does this give some indication of, you know, when we can let go of our mind and because it's our friend and we can trust our mind? You know, we have to be like Chichiketu. When we get humiliated and cursed to die as a demon, we have a smile on our face. Then you know that type of person. He's... Um, and. You're not like, like it used to be in the old days. Maybe it still is, I don't know. I haven't been in America so much. The devotees maybe join in Buffalo, New York. Then winter comes and they go to San Diego. And they, go, they like surfing, so they surf the waves in San Diego. But then later they hear that the waves in Hawaii are better than the waves in San Diego, and the weather's better in Hawaii than it is in San Diego too. So then they go to Hawaii. And then what happens? They're in the temple in Hawaii, and then when the surf's up, they're out. And then when the surf's down, they come back. And when the surf's up, they're out. So this is um, not a stable situation, okay? So this is not Chitraketu. This is a conditioned soul who's attached to happiness and distress, honor, dishonor, heat and cold, big waves or no waves. You know, he's only to perform a devotional service when there's no ways. When there's big ways, he's gone. So steadiness in devotional service throughout all the happiness and distress, honor and dishonor, heat and cold, with a smile on your face. Just like yesterday, I was visiting Naranjan Swami. I went and I knocked on the door. He's staying at a Grihasta's house. And the maid answered, let me in. And how did I know where Naranjan Swami was? Because I could hear laughter. He's happy. He never criticizes anybody. He's fully absorbed in chanting the holy names. And he's preaching to so many people, encouraging them in devotional service. And he's happy no matter where he is, what situation he is. I mean, and he's a sick man. He's always having to undergo Ayurvedic treatment every year. He comes here. It's like, how's it going, Maharaj? He's smiling. Anyway, I'm a, I'm a sick man, but I'm all right. And who can do that? Uh, conditioned soul, if their body is not okay, they cannot possibly have a smile on their face. It is impossible. Happiness and distress depends on the body of the conditioned soul. But for the liberated soul, it makes absolutely no difference of the condition of the body. Because he's finding his happiness on a whole different level. Okay, any other questions or comments? It's getting late. It's time for prasadam. Hare Krishna. All glories to Shilapalpa.